Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Continuing on NFL Week 4, Sunday Night Football. Uh, I bet when they made the schedule, they thought this would be a good one. Aaron Rodgers against the Chiefs. Obviously, that's not what we're going to see. Uh, Chiefs are in the Meadowlands to play the Jets. Jets catching nine points at home here. Totals at 41 and a half. Let's do it. Welcome to The Source. The Source. Source. Get the sauce. So the public's all over the Chiefs in this one, as you would expect. Uh, over 80% of the tickets on Kansas City. Money's actually starting to come in on the Jets. Uh, still over 60% of the money on KC, but on Tuesday morning, it was over 90%. So there's Sharps out there taking the points with the Jets in this one. Uh, and the line does drop from 9.5 down to 9. All right, so let's talk <laughs> Let's talk Jets football. And this probably isn't going to come as news to any of you. But the Jets offense is pretty bad this year. <laughs> They're dead last in points per game, dead last in yards per game, dead last in offensive DVOA. Uh, I think it's safe to say that this is the worst offense in the NFL. In fact, I'd go as far to say it's the worst offense we've seen in the NFL in several years. Um, now, everyone's blaming Zach Wilson, which is <laughs> somewhat deserving. I mean, he's been pretty terrible. 52.4% completions, 5.6 yards per attempt, two touchdowns, four picks, a 57 passer rating. He's dead last in every single one of those categories except passer rating. He just barely edges out Justin Fields in that one. I'm not going to argue with these numbers. These numbers are terrible. I mean, Zach Wilson has thrown more interceptions than the entire Jets offense has scored touchdowns this season it's four to three but to be honest i think people have this notion that the jets offense would be completely fine if aaron Rodgers didn't get hurt uh they have other issues it's not just zach wilson the jets offensive line has been awful they're creating zero space in the run game they're dead last in adjusted line yards 24th in adjusted sack rate 22nd in pressure rate allowed so this is a jets offensive line that's getting beat week in and week out and zach wilson is <laughs> he's not handling it well i mean <laughs> just 2.3 net yards per attempt when pressured uh 31st in the nfl he's actually tied for dead last in the nfl with joe burrow which is interesting uh, but the idea that everything would be fine if aaron Rodgers was on the field just doesn't seem plausible aaron Rodgers wasn't even good under pressure last year in fact he was towards the bottom of the nfl and i just don't see it improving much i mean as we know the jets put dwayne brown on the ir last week um mckay becton switched over to left tackle for that game he had started at right tackle the first two weeks now they're saying he might go back to right tackle for this one uh, I, I don't know. I just don't see how you can have a ton of hope in this offense if you're a Jets fan. Now, I guess some good news for the Jets offense would be the Chiefs pass rush seems to be off to a little bit of a slow start this season. Now, remember, they did play one game without Chris Jones, so these numbers might be skewed a little bit. Kansas City's defense is 11th in blitz rate, so they are sending guys after the quarterback, but they're just 31st in pressure rate created. They are 14th in adjusted sack rate, so when they are getting to the quarterback, they're getting them down. Uh, they're not allowing any broken tackles in the backfield, which is good. But we expect Kansas City's pass rush to be elite. I mean, the pass rush has been the backbone of the Chiefs' defense for like four or five years now, so we expect it to be better than that. But again, I don't know how seriously I even take these numbers because they played without Chris Jones in week one, and they only sacked Jared Goff once. In the two games since then, they've recorded seven sacks, so... Chiefs pass rush seems to be fine if you ask me. You would think the Jets game plan offensively is to get the run game going. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that they don't trust the ball in Zach Wilson's hands. And in years past, stopping the run has definitely been the weakness of this Chiefs defense. But actually, the Chiefs defense is off to a pretty solid start in that department. Uh, KC's defense is 14th in yards per carry allowed, uh, 11th in rushing yards per game allowed, 18th in run defense DVOA. And it's not like Steve Spagnuolo is going to be fooled by this game plan. The Chiefs know the Jets are going to try to run the ball. I mean, it's pretty obvious they don't have much of a choice. That was the Jets game plan against New England last week. Run the football. And how did it work out for him? 22, <laughs> 22 carries, 38 yards, 1.7 yards per carry. Uh, I don't know how you can have any faith in the Jets offense, honestly. This is like the worst thing I've ever seen. Now, on the other side of the ball, this is where you could start to find a couple angles that support a Jets plus nine bet. Uh, first of all, Chiefs offense looked excellent last week, but it was a home game against the Bears. Chicago's almost as bad defensively as the Jets are offensively, and the Bears defense is terrible. Uh, I would hope Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and the Chiefs offense would rip that defense up, and they did. But the truth is, we can't just ignore what we saw to start this season. I mean, through the first two weeks of the year, Kansas City was averaging just 18.5 points a game. Mahomes is averaging just 6.64 yards per pass attempt. 
Now, drop passes in week one certainly doesn't help those numbers. But as a whole, last week against the Bears was really the first time we saw this Chiefs offense look good. If I'm being honest, I have questions about the Chiefs offense this year. I'm still not 100% convinced it's going to be the same unstoppable Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Chiefs offense that we've seen in years past. That being said, I have to say, I think the Jets defense might be a bit overvalued right now. Uh, they opened up with an excellent performance against the Bills in week one. No doubt they were great. But the two games since then weren't anything special at all. The Cowboys offense was moving the ball in the Jets defense fairly easily. And then last week, I know a lot of people are going to look at the final score 15-10 and think, oh, wow, the Jets defense played great against New England, kept them in the game. Not really. I mean, they didn't play bad, but that game wasn't close at all. I mean, the final score may appear close, 15-10, but the Patriots outgained the Jets 358-171, to more than doubled their total yardage. Pa uh, Patriots averaged 6.9 yards per pass attempt and 3.9 yards per carry. That's not a defensive shutdown. That game was at home against New England's offense, not even a threatening offense. The truth is, the Jets' pass rush just isn't there right now, and if you look at how this Jets' defense is built, that's got to be the weakness. Edge rushers. I mean, they got Quinn and Williams in the middle, C.J. Mosley at inside linebacker, they got an elite secondary, but the pass rush is just a different story. The New York Jets have recorded just six sacks on the season, which is tied for 21st in the league. Uh, they're 28th in pressure rate and 29th in QB hurry rate. Jets secondary is badass, so is the run defense, but you really expect them to stop Patrick Mahomes if he's got time in the pocket. And by the way, the Chiefs pass protection, it's about as good as it gets. Uh, their pass blocking numbers were elite last season and they're elite again this year. Uh, they're tied with Miami. They've only allowed one sack this entire season, 10th in pressure rate allowed, and 10th in QB hurry rate allowed. Now, there is an injury question mark on the Chiefs' offensive line, and it's a big one. Uh, left tackle Donovan Smith, he's listed as questionable. He participated in a full practice on Wednesday, but actually got downgraded to a light practice on Thursday. Obviously, if he doesn't play, that'll be huge for the Jets, because let's be real, Jets aren't covering this number without a pass rush. As far as what I'm betting... <laughs> This sucks, man. I mean, this is such a bad Sunday night game. Obviously, my betting brain wants to take the Jets. Take the nine points. Chiefs, not the best team against the spread. In fact, they're pretty bad. Laying nine points, I feel like they never cover this number. Uh, but the truth is, this Jets offense is so bad that I think we might need to erase the betting brain out of it and just think logically here. And also, I looked into it. Since 2021, the Chiefs are just 10 and 11 against the spread when favored by seven or more points. So not nearly as bad as I thought. I can't bet this Jets team. This team sucks. Uh, I don't care how square it is. I got to side with... I'm with the heavy public. I'm with you guys. Give me the Chiefs minus nine. I also think the Jets team total under 15 and a half might be worth a look. If you want my top bets, parlays of the day, uh, if you want to join our Discord, or if you want to get on the NFL against the spread giveaway contest, head over to kylecrims.com. The information's right there on the homepage. NFL week four, football Sunday's here. Uh, let's have ourselves a good one. Remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.